Hello my friends and welcome back to Entraz. In this video we're going to be checking out Flex VPN. Now with all the various VPN solutions we have, DMVPN, GetVPN, and FlexVPN, this is one of those options you can use if you require an Ike version 2 and IPsec based communication mechanism where you have multiple hosts behind the same NAT IP address. I believe that DMVPN actually works a lot better than FlexVPN if you don't have that limitation, as DMVPN allows you to have an active-active hub scenario. With FlexVPN, you basically have a spoke-to-failover or active-passive style hub scenarios. So what we're going to look at here is we're going to see R4 and R17 are going to be our independent hubs. So we'll have our hub 1 and our hub 2. From here we'll have our spoke 1 being 15 and our spoke 2 being 16. Now we're going to simulate that this could be a LAN or a WAN. It really doesn't matter. What we're looking at is having the ability to have encryption between these four separate systems and allow routing between them. And as I say, like DMVPN, we do have the ability to do spoke to spoke tunnel connectivity. However, that configuration is quite in depth and seriously, I haven't been able to get it to work yet. So it's something I'm going to be working on eventually as well. But like I said, any spoke at any given time can only have connectivity to one of the hubs at a time. And we will talk about that a little bit when we get into our basic configuration using Ike version 2 and EIGRP. So we're going to come down here and check out the configuration options we have. So we have Hub 1, and we're going to start out with Crypto Ike version 2. Now we have to remember we have to put the proposals and the policies in here. So I mean, you could take this configuration and copy and paste it in, and it's going to work pretty well. What we're going to do is come in here to Secure CRT. You're going to see here I have R14, 15, and 17. So I'm just going to disconnect from these two really quick. And keep in mind I'm starting with a fresh configuration so you get to see how Eve starts out with Cisco routers. So we start out here with the initial configuration dialog, which we can close down. There we go. And this is going to be host name of R14 which is going to be our hub 1. So let's move this over to the side so we can get a look at our configurations. Let me actually make this larger. It's probably very small for you right now. Let's see appearance. That's a little better. Hopefully that still looks good on the video side. But what we're going to start out here is you have to create a crypto and you can use Ike version 1 with Isacamp and Ike version 2, of course. Ike version 2 is a requirement for FlexVPN, so that's one of the uh, configurations we have to do. We first create a proposal and we have to name it. So for this case, I will call it a Flex Proposal. Now keep in mind, you must specify a few things here. You must have either a set of encryption algorithms such as AES GCM. This includes integrity in it, uh, but I'm not going to actually use AES uh, GCM for the new encryption policies of Suite B. So we'll do that encryption and an integrity as well as a Diffie-Hellman group configured. Uh, PRF could also be done. However, let's just sit here and start with encryption. Now we have all of these possibilities when dealing with encryption in Ike version 2 phase 1. Now a lot of the times if you want super high encryption and Suite B you would use the AES GCM 256. However, the AES CBC 128 is still a FIPS 140-2 certified I believe so we're just going to go with that for the time being. And next we can specify the hashing or the integrity using, and normally we would use SHA-512. However, I'm just going to use SHA-1 for the time being. I believe that's the 96-bit uh, SHA standard. 
And of course, when looking at the group, that is the Diffie-Hellman group numbers. Now currently we do have the elliptical curve of 19, 20, and 21, which will be your highly secure connectivity options for Diffie-Hellman. Here we're just going to make it simple on us and use Diffie-Hellman 1 for the 768. Next we have to configure a Crypto Ike version 2 policy. We'll name this Flex Policy. And for some reason you only create this policy here for the proposal. Keep in mind you can also do match statements to match addresses and uh, FVRF if need be, but we're going to skip that for the time being. Next we'll do a Crypto Ike version 2 profile that we'll call to later, flex-profile. Now you must match a local and remote authentication method as well as matching identities or certificates if you plan on going that route. So what we're really going to do is just say to match the local address 172.16.0.14 which is the IP address we will be configuring on our Ethernet interface for our hub router 14. If you want to have it match all remote identities you can come in here and just say match identity remote any and pretty much anyone that connects will be allowed to. We do have to specify the authentication for the remote and local as it says up here under the authentication method. So authentication remote will be a pre-shared key and this is going to be the key for spoke key. Now we do the same thing for the authentication local pre-shared key as the hub key. Now one of the things about FlexVPN is its use of this thing called a virtual template. I don't have the virtual template configured yet so it might scream at us but luckily it works. So let's do show run brief with a section of crypto to make sure we have all of our configuration for our proposal, our policy, and our profiles here. The virtual template showed up, so I think we're good in that regard. Ike version 2, phase 1 has been set up. Next we need to create a crypto ipsec transform set, which will give us a name of flex t set. And we're going to use one of the various encryption algorithms. Now keep in mind a lot of these do look the same as the phase one for ISACAMP and Ike version 2 as you have authentication header, AESP, and of course the integrity. So we're going to keep it simple and use the ESP AES along with the ESP SHA HMAC. That'll create our transform set and we'll label it as a mode tunnel as that's what FlexVPN uses. From here we need to create a crypto ipsec profile which is actually going to be called in the uh, virtual template interface. Crypto ipsec profile flex ipsec profile. From here you have to specify that transform set we just created, the flex t set. And of course we need to set the Ike version 2 profile which we created up top. This is the, I believe it's the flex-profile. And then we're done with our crypto configuration. So we can do show run brief again and view our crypto configuration. Ike version 2 and IPSEC. So I think we're good there. So let's go into our loopback interface, give it an IP address. I usually give all of my loopbacks a slash 32-bit IP address so it comes up as a loopback interface. We'll go into Ethernet 0 slash 0, make sure we do a no shut on that. Give it an IP address, 172.16.0.14 and we'll give this a 24-bit mask. We also have our ETH 0-1 uh, that connects to our other hub R17 
to simulate an internal network. We'll give this an IP address of 172.17.0.14 with a 24-bit mask as well. When this is done, we now need to go into our interface for our virtual template that we mentioned a moment ago. This is the FlexVPN virtual template uh, we'll see in a few moments. Once we create this virtual template, we give it an IP unnumbered of loopback0, so it takes the IP address from loopback0, of course. We need to specify the tunnel source, which is going to be... going on here. Ah, this is one mistake that a lot of people have made recently, especially with FlexVPN. You'll notice from my configuration on the left there, I forgot something. You actually have to come here and label it Interface Virtual Template 1 and give it a type of tunnel before you can actually create it this way and we kind of messed up. Because we created virtual template one with a serial, we now need to create a whole new template entirely. So let's try do show IP interface brief. Virtual access of one is still there. So let's try to rid ourselves of virtual access one. And it's not working, of course. I'm not even sure why virtual access one is up. Very interesting there. So let's shut down ETH00. Hopefully that'll help us out. Show IP interface brief. No virtual access one. We already tried. We can try it again just for giggles. Nope. No virtual template one. Uh, type tunnel. Command ignored. Deprecated post 12.2. Okay. Well, keep in mind, a lot of the times if you mess up the virtual template interface, you really kind of need to start from scratch because it just doesn't seem to want to work. So let's exit out of this, do a write erase. We'll confirm it, and then we'll do a reload. Once it comes back up, we'll be able to run through this again. And now that we're back, we'll just come in here and make it easy on us. So we'll come in here, hit enable, configure the host name again, uh, hub, no, let's do R14 hub one yet again. So let's try this again, shall we? Now this is where we messed up last time, so interface virtual template one type tunnel. You remember that. IP unnumbered will be using loopback zero. Now we can specify our tunnel source is Ethernet zero slash zero, and the tunnel mode is going to be IPsec over IPv4. When we specify the tunnel protection IPsec profile command, this is what enables this particular tunnel to use our Ike version 2 and IPsec profile configuration. So flex IPsec profile. Flex IPsec profile. And there we go. Isacamp has turned on. Now keep in mind Isacamp is just what they use within the Cisco code. Even though it is Ike version 2, it'll still say Isacamp. So we verify crypto. We verify our interfaces as well. Loopback 0, Ethernet 0, 0, Ethernet 0 slash 1, and our virtual template. Show IP interface brief. Exclude those unassigned. They're all up and good to go. So let's see what's next. Router ERGRP flex. So we're going to add ERGRP to our configuration, and this time we're going to be using the named mode. So we have to specify the 
the address family. We're going to be using IPv4 unicast. It's going to be autonomous system one. Our network is going to include our loopback interface and our Ethernet 0 slash 1 interface. From here, show IP ERGRP interface to verify the interfaces are indeed trying to advertise and we're good to go for there. So next we need to go to hub 2 which in this case is going to be 17. We're going to be doing kind of the same thing we did before so even though I can't copy and paste from the web page here I can copy and paste from 14. So this is going to be R17 hub 2. So I'll come in here and show run section crypto. And I'll copy and paste this. You're going to notice there's only one thing that I will have to change. So let's paste in here. And one of the nice things about secure CRT is being able to modify the commands before applying them. And you're going to see that worked. So let's do show run brief and do a section crypto. Everything looks good. For Hub 2, we'll now configure the interface configuration settings. Interface loopback 0, IP address 17, 17, 17, 17, the slash 32. Interface E00, we'll have an IP address 172.16.0.17 with the same slash 24 bit mask, and we will no shut. Interface E0 slash 1 will be given an IP address, same as 14. No shut. Interface virtual template 1, type tunnel. IP unnumbered loopback 0. Tunnel source E0 slash 0. Tunnel mode is going to be IPsec over IPv4, and we have our tunnel protection, IPsec profile, flex, IPsec profile. Once that's done, ISACAMP should turn on. We'll go back into our ERGRP configuration for address family IPv4 unicast autonomous system 1. Network of the loopback interface and the network of the eth 0 slash 1. From here we see our neighbor adjacency is up and running. So we do show IP ERGRP interface. We have a peer on Ethernet 0 slash 1. Show IP ERGRP neighbors, which of course is 14. Show IP route ERGRP gives us the loopback interface of router 14. We'll just ping it to make sure it works, and we have success. So now R14 and R17 are configured and running as they should. So let's come here to spoke 1. You're going to notice a lot of it is the same, except we have a few differences with the flex vpn client configuration and the tunnel one instead of a virtual template some of the order of operations require us to do certain things before others such as we need to create the ipsec profile before doing the tunnel and we need to do the tunnel before the flex vpn client config but however let's come in here to spoke one which is router 15 enable config t host name is r15 spoke one and like i said we have to do all the same configurations a lot of this of course we can still copy and paste so i'll come back through here copy and paste my config because most all this is the same the only difference is i have to change the local to 15 Remote, of course, can be any, as it's going to be attaching to dot .14 and dot .17. One of the things you do have to be aware of, however, 
is the remote is not spoke key. This will be the hub key. And the local here will be the spoke key. Everything else other than the virtual template should be good to go for the time being. So we hit paste, everything's in. Do show run section crypto. And you're going to see here we have all of our profiles and our address matching. Now, once again, we can't do the Flex VPN client until we configure the tunnel. So, interface loopback 0, IP address 1515.15.15, slash 32 bit mask, interface E0 slash 0. We'll give it an IP address of 172.16.0.15 with a slash 24-bit mask and no shut the interface. From here, we come over to tunnel one. We also give it an unnumbered of loopback zero. The tunnel source is ethernet zero slash zero. So there's sequence datagrams and source, so keep that in mind. We have a tunnel destination, which is actually going to be dynamic based on that Ike version 2 Flex VPN client config. And lastly, we have our tunnel protection, IPsec profile, Flex IPsec profile we created above. So once that's done, we can come over here and create the crypto Ike version 2 client for Flex VPN, and we have to give it a name, in this case, Flex Client. From here, we have to specify a peer. So, peer 1 will be router 14, hub 1. Peer 2 will be router 17 or hub 2. And then we have to specify the client to connect over tunnel 1. So we're good, Isocamp is online and running. Last thing we have to worry about is turning on EIGRP. So same type of thing, router EIGRP flex, address family IPv4, unicast, autonomous system one, and specify the network. Now keep in mind, the loopback is all we got. So, Flex VPN connection is down. Flex client connecting 172.16.0.15 to 14. All right, show IP interface brief. And the tunnel is down. And we are, while we are waiting, I'm going to do a no logging console because this can get fairly annoying since it's just down. So, router 14, let's verify. Show run interface virtual template 1. IP unnumbered loopback 0. Source Ethernet 00. Mode IPsec. And I believe I found out where I missed. I forgot to add the tunnel mode of IPsec over IPv4. And there we go, tunnel one is now up. Show IP route ERGRP. And you're gonna see here we have connectivity to the loop back on 14, the loop back on 17, and of course the network in between R14 and R17. If we do a quick ping here, 172.17.0.255, and you're gonna see here we got a response. So let's ping 17 as well. And we're good to go. Show IP ERGRP interface. We have one peer. Show IP ERGRP neighbors. And we have 14. Now keep in mind, like I said before, FlexVPN is an active standby or active passive style of flexible VPN solutions. So you're only going to see one of the hubs. If we wanted to see if the other hub would come up, we can do a clear crypto Ike version 2 security association command and we should see our neighbors change to 17. And as you see, it did change to 17. And let's try to ping 14, 14, 14, 14. 
we'll do a trace route all the same and you'll see that it goes through R17 to get to R14. So as you'll see here, it went through R17, went over the connection between them, and we were able to get to router 14. So we got one thing left to do, show run section crypto. I'm gonna copy all this config and I'm going to modify one thing. R16, nope, okay, enable, config T, host, R16, spoke, two. From here, I'll copy and paste my crypto information, and you'll see what doesn't work. So we paste that in. You're going to notice we can't connect to client tunnel one because it does not exist yet. So what else do we need? We will need our interface configurations as well as EIGRP. So interface loopback 0, IP address 161616 with a slash 32-bit mask. Interface E0 slash 0, IP address 172.16.0.16 with a slash 24-bit mask. And no shut. From here, we create our interface tunnel one, IP unnumbered loopback zero, tunnel source E0 slash zero, tunnel mode this time, IPsec over IPv4, tunnel destination is going to be Flex VPN dynamic, and we'll have our tunnel protection for the IPsec profile, Flex IPsec profile. Now there's one thing we have to go back and do. For the crypto Ike version 2 client flex VPN flex client, we need to make sure we say client connect tunnel 1. IceCamp turns on and our flex VPN connection is up. So if we do a show IP route ERGRP, you're going to notice that it doesn't work because we need to do our ERGRP connection. Address family IPv4, unicast autonomous system one, network 16, 16, 16, 16. Now keep in mind this 0000, 0, 0, 0 matches the IP address. So you could be doing wildcard masks to allow all IP addresses within a specific wildcard to be included but this way I like to control which interfaces are advertising. Once that's done, show IP route ERGRP, and you'll see now we have connectivity even to router 15. Now keep in mind here, you're gonna notice what hub you're going to based on the next hop statement. So, Router 16 is connected to R14, and Router 15 is connected to 17. One of the ways to also check this is to do show crypto Ike version 2 SA commands, which will tell you if you have a security association for Ike version 2, and you can also use the show crypto IPsec SA command to look at the actual IPsec connection, showing you packets that are encapsulated encrypted, digest, decapsulated, decrypted, and of course verified. So as I said before, one of the reasons I don't like FlexVPN is because you do connect to different hubs and you can't connect to both of them simultaneously. So R16 to trace to 15 will actually have to go through R17 to R14 and then to R15 and then it will have to go back the same way as you can see here. So yep that is FlexVPN in a nutshell. You can have multiple hubs for a FlexVPN hub to spoke design solution. It works great with multiple spokes that may be sharing the same external NAT address. Um, also works really well in, in really any other situation where you want the flexibility to do this. One of the nice things about FlexVPN is you can actually use other types of crypto connectivity to it 
and not just FlexVPN. So well, there you have it. You have your hub with a virtual template and this virtual template has virtual access links that show you when a FlexVPN client is actually connected via FlexVPN. So virtual access one. When you do a show IP route, you'll also notice that we have the virtual access numbers listed here. One of the big problems I have with FlexVPN, however, is it's very difficult to see which host is connected to which virtual access connection if you do not label your loopbacks properly. So if you have some arbitrary loopback configuration, it's going to be a nightmare trying to figure it out. Because of those show crypto statements, you're not always going to be able to match your virtual access heads with your IP addresses and the same with Ike version 2 because these tunnel IDs do not always match the virtual access IDs. So there you go, that was FlexVPN. In my next video, I'm probably going to be doing a DMVPN slash FlexVPN pros and cons of each, kind of see them both at the same time. So I hope to see you in that next video.